Music Arts Festival? Well, of course, there was no festival. It was with great persistence and a lot of magic that this even came into existence. I was on the Evanston Arts Council when the festival was started with the guidance of Joe Zendel, who was the then executive director, and his contacts. We um, investigated communities that were like ours uh, to find out with the diversity and uh, to find out what they were doing. He was an incredible executive director. I've never worked, and I've been on other boards since then and before. And he was a hands-on creative guy. When he got here, he decided he needed to reach out to the artists and get them to be involved in all the workings of the communities, particularly works of other artists. And they uh, asked for people to be a member of the Arts Council who represented the ethnic minority. The city implemented a long-range cultural planning project. And a part of that project was addressing the lack of minority representation in arts programming. Something that was multicultural was needed to be celebrated in the Evans uh, community. And so it was from that beginning in that appointment that this emphasis on doing something about uh, the uh, ethnic groups, that this was planned. We finally agreed that we should come out big and have a festival. It was named the Ethnic Arts Festival. And the rest is history. Over 10,000 people in attendance. More than 100 nations. 125 juried artists, arts and craft work, poetry, togetherness, peoples of all races. The city of Evanston presents diversity. I uh, was the director of the festival from 1994 until 2001. One of the things I found, the first year they had this wonderful logo that somebody had drawn, and there were four figures representing Asian culture, African culture, European culture, and the Americas. And there were four figures, and they were kind of joined at the arms dancing. It was a wonderful thing, and I thought, why, you know, why did they just abandon that after one year? That's such a great symbol. So we re reinstituted that. I want to play around with that idea of using maybe one of the figures or you know, adding real photography uh, to the poster design. And just trying to change it up every year so it's a little bit different and kind of refreshed in that way. And how I interpret it, I know it's supposed to capture multi ethnic but nondescript. I think we really want to give a feel of this is inclusive of everything. Everybody has a story to tell. Everybody has something to show. And that became sort of like the brand for the festival. We always had that symbol there which signified the ethnic festival. Our committee started out with 12 members. By the time I left, it was close to 50 volunteers that would work the festival those two days. It was kind of amazing to me to come in, having worked on other festivals, and seeing how this committee really functions so well with everybody having a separate part that they took care of. So now the idea popped up about the flags, and that was our specialty in the ethnic arts field. I think we started with about 45 countries. Little by little, you know, people would sponsor a flag, and then we would have this parade of nations, which would open the festival. A lot of people were interested in countries that they had a connection with. The first year, we had about uh, 50 flags of different countries. Then each year, we'd raise additional money, and we'd buy more flags, and eventually we have ended up, I think we have about 193 flags. We got children from the community to carry the flag on the pole and bring it around. And I like the excitement of the kids coming to carry the flags. They do their lap, put their flag in, and then they quickly come back and want another one. And when it's all done, we have one person who goes around with the American flag 
goes all the way around and places it at, at the corner where it's supposed to be placed. To have all those flags come out of all the different nations, and then when they're all out there around the lagoon, you, you can't help but feel really proud to be a tiny part of that. And I always enjoy Bill Campbell reading, reading the, names. the names of the uh, yeah. countries off. He knows he can't read them off real fast because it takes time to put those flags and the stakes. But he, he does a good nice job. job and, uh, we always kid him about it. For 21 years, I hosted a program on ABC 7 WLST in Chicago. Good morning, I'm Bill Campbell and welcome once again to Chicago. And next weekend is the 15th annual Evanston Ethnic Arts Festival. And then we would come on, um, some of the members of the committee, we would also bring artists with them. They would show their work or they would perform on the show. Then we would devote a whole show to the Ethnic Festival. One of my very favorite artists who was at the festival was Mr. Imagination. Well, well I'm going to be taking a material like this, which is called uh, sandstone, and I would be showing them how they can look at it and just uh, use their uh, see imagination with it. He would bring screws that have the grooves on them, nails, things like that, and people would just come and get a piece of sandstone, and there were adults, children sitting all over the lawn on the grass near where he was was in the tent and just working on the sandstone and they came up with amazing sculptures and um, I just, it, he was so wonderful. And the Evanston Ethnic Arts Festival was the event that really reflected what our show was designed to do. It's, it's, it's quite something, you know, my experience and just seeing everyone coming from every ethnic background you can imagine. Uh, you know, one place during the summer where everybody is there and just having a wonderful time. I think it brings people together too in Evanston. Not only the volunteers, who most of them I never knew before I started doing this. Also, people come the fair. I mean, it's really terrific. It's very inclusive. We have over 100 artists that exhibit that represent over 80 different nations. And we have a large family arts activity area that we have craft tents for adults as well as children. Back in the day, a lot of the volunteers were, were family and friends and our children. So my children literally grew up in, in their art pictures of them in the family activity area helping other kids enjoy themselves. My kids who are 43 and 41 went. Now my daughter who lives in Elmsby and has two kids, they go. Most years we've had origami. It's so popular. We've had instrument making. There's a woman who does plaster on your hands, henna, face painting. We've had doll making, corn husk dolls. Moroccan tiles, what we call international spice pots, where people can use all the spices from around the world. The global village has not existed the whole time. They often look like what we would think of as teepees, but they can be any shape structure that people decide to make. It starts with branches, with or without leaves on them, and then people take it any way they want, and it's just grown over the years. Kids will make them and spend the entire day in them. I've seen kids make structures where they're covered in leaves, almost like a little cave, and then we have fabric to cover them with. But it's so amazing to see what people come up with. Seeing families with young children and the happiness that they have in allowing their children to be in such a warm and inviting yet educational environment, but in such a way that it's a natural education. People learn different ways. So there are people who can learn by sitting and reading a book about uh, Ukrainian art. That's wonderful. Those are linear, sequential learners. There are people that can learn by looking at a picture, but it's almost impossible not to teach the room, the whole room, if you give them something to move with, to look at, 
and to experience. So why this festival, even if it didn't work, which of course it does, is that it's an incredible teaching tool. And there's one thing you can be sure about in Evanston, they love to learn. People can come to the festival and learn about some of the contributions of some of the other cultures of the world that are right close to Evanston. So I think it's a, it's, it's a, a cultural activity and always cultural activities are beneficial to not only the adults but the kids as well. So I mean it's wonderful just to walk around a relatively small area and see this diversity of work, the diversity of people, of artists. I've lived in Evanston for roughly about 50 years and the ethnic festival is one thing that I look forward to because it shows a diversity of people in Evanston as well as in the world. Everybody's welcome, everybody embraces the event, and I think it's just really special and smart that the city of Evanston found a way to celebrate the cultural differences of this community through the arts. The city of Evanston is known as a community that really embraces all, celebrates all, and is accessible to all. Just seeing kids come who wouldn't normally be able to get their face painted or get henna because it costs so much even at some of the other festivals. It's been really important for all of those activities to be free and open to anybody in the public because People can go around and buy things at the booths, but you don't need to. Everybody can be part of it. I'm a visual artist. I come from a family of artists. Uh, my father was a, a talented graphic artist. He was from Evanston. Um, in 1996, I was doing a lot of charcoal and pencil drawings, um, work that would be described as surreal or political in nature. And I remember Teresa Passioni really encouraged me to exhibit my artwork. Uh, and I sold my first piece uh, at the Evanston Ethnic Arts Festival. We've had the most outstanding local talent you can imagine over the years. Being able to get bands like Kenge Kenge from Africa was a huge coup for us to have them out there. Boban Markovic, huge Serbian brass band that came in, that was exciting to have them there. Uh, Red Barat, Indian drummers. We had Ricardo Lembo last year, who is just fabulous from the Congo Kinshasa. We have over a dozen food vendors that represent a diverse mix of artful cuisine. We have Cajun, Caribbean, African, um, Vietnamese, oh, wow. Tibetan. Um, so something really for every palate. That's right. And the thing that's so neat is that you have all the art displays around the fountain and there, there's this wonderful section where the food is and you can just see folks sitting down on the, the side by the lagoon just pigging out. <laughs> These are the people of Evanston. We've got a great Belizean community here, an Asian community here, Hispanic community, Asian community, and it's very mixed. You know, on a weekend in July, there was a group of human beings that were there because it was a celebration of our shared humanity. Every generation, every color, every gender, just everybody hugging each other and high-fiving and shaking hands. Every year it continues to be as amazing as that first, first time back in 1999. I think this event lasted for so long, and I think Evanston does have a commitment to diversity. Well, just that it survived and it lasted, and it's, it's wonderful. 29 going on 30 successful festivals basically affirms the vision and the commitment and the passion and the spirit of this particular festival. And the fact that it changes a little bit every year, that's good.
Yeah. 